Hi guys, I'm Luke. And my name's Cody. Uh, so today we've got a little uh, cricket session for you today, guys. So a quick run through of cricket for those of you that haven't taken part before. Um, first of all, so I want to go to the COVID stuff. So we're using bats today. You might have bats at home. You should only be using them in your um, bubble or with your household. Okay, so we've sanitized all our equipment. That's why me and Luke are using it safely today. And we're making sure that we're distanced when possible. Um, so yeah, back to cricket. If you haven't taken part in cricket before, we can always refer back to rounders as it's the same sort of setup. Okay, so it's based on two teams. One team being the fielding team, uh, who is going to try and catch the ball. Then we've got the batting team, who's going to be batting the ball to the fielding team. Okay, so the breakdown is three different types of things you can be doing during a game of cricket. You can be the bowler, who's bowling to the person hitting the ball. Okay, you can be the batter, who's going to be hitting the ball, or you can be the fielder, who's going to be trying to catch the ball. Okay, so we're going to be looking at a few different drills and talking you through. Each role, uh, we're going to start with a little warm up that looks going to take us through now, guys. Okay, so I'm going to participate in the warm up for you. Yeah, so as Cody said, we're going to go through a warm up. Main reason we warm up, try and get our body nice and warm, lower the chance of you know getting an injury, and also start to get our blood pumping around the body. So as Cody said, we've got a fielding, we've got um, batting, and we've got bowling. So I'm going to take Cody through a little fielding drill that's hopefully going to get his heart rate go you know, nice and high, ready for the activity today. Okay, so all the two are consist of is me standing exactly where I am now. We've got Cody here up in, um, in the middle of our first activity. So as you can see, on Cody's left, my right, is a red cone. And on Cody's right, my left, we've got a blue cone. All that's going to happen is Cody's going to stand in the middle. As you can see, I've got uh, a tennis racket. And I've got a tennis ball as well. It's nice and soft. And I'm going to shout out one of these colours. So I'll either say red or I'll say blue. Whichever one I say, Cody has to sidestep. You know, on his toe. He's always going to be on his toes, waiting for that colour. As soon as I say on these colours, he's going to sidestep through that colour. I'm going to hit this ball underarm, nice and light, to him, to his chest, hopefully, and he's going to catch it, nice and simple. He's going to throw it back to me. As soon as he's throwing the ball back to me, he's then going to come back in the middle and wait for the next colour. We're going to give it, you know, six, seven, eight goes, just so we can get, you know, really into it. And just to get a little example to you guys at home, you can definitely do things like this in your garden, whether you've got a little tennis ball and tennis racket, a little things you guys can put out as cones. So let's get into it. So you say, I'm going to shout out one of these colours. Cody's always going to be listening. He's going to be on his toes. He's going to be ready. And he's going to be out giving his best shot. There we go. Okay, so, ready. Okay, so as you can see, look where he's going with his hand flew. Ready. Ready. There, there. Flew. Flew. There, there. And then. Okay, there we go. As you can see, that's nice and simple, but it's very effective in terms of you know getting your heart rate going. So as you can see, all Cody was doing then, when the ball was coming towards him, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can catch. Obviously, people like to be you know very smart and catch with one hand. Obviously, it's easy to catch with two. And as you can see, loads of different activities that we do. You know, it's always easy to catch a ball if you position yourself in the right space. Okay. So as you see, as that ball's coming, you know, towards his chest. As soon as I hit that ball, he's got his hands up ready, you know, in a little V-shape, and he's going to try and catch it with the two hands, okay, and bring it into his body as well. So that's basically our first little warm-up, so we're not going to go through, you know, a 15-minute warm-up like we would in the centre. That's just an example for you guys to try at home. So all we're going to do now is we're going to spin the camera around, and we're going to take you through our first action activity. Okay. Right, perfect. So, as you can see here, we've got two different balls that we just used. These aren't tennis balls. You guys can see there with this camera let you. Okay, these have got little what we call seams over the ball. Okay, so in terms of crickets, as you can see, they've both got these little little bumps in the middle of the balls. So all you're gonna do if you're holding the cricket ball, two fingers either side of the seam, so you've got a good grip on the ball. So when you are running up to release the ball and to bowl, you're not gonna let go of it. These are, you know, a little bit harder than tennis balls. But obviously, if you want to be able to bowl, and obviously the direction you throw it, there needs to be enough weight in the ball to keep that direction so it doesn't just start swerving off in those different directions. So we're going to take you through the step-by-step -step of how literally just bowl one of these balls, how to, you know, get the correct technique and, you know, produce a good outcome when it comes to bowling. Okay, so me and Cody are going to have a couple of goes each, but I'm quickly going to walk you, through, walk you through it very quickly. So firstly, as we said, two fingers either side of the seam, okay, Gives us a good grip on the ball. 
you obviously in a, in a real you know a real game if you play cricket properly you do run up maybe 10 15 yards maybe more people who bowl faster okay well, all we're going to do is things are step by step just basically walking it okay so i'm left-handed cody's right-handed so it's going to be a little bit different when you watch both of us okay so if you're left-handed watch all watch my kind of technique if you're right-handed you know watch cody because you're gonna be doing what cody does okay so we're going to basically be bowling from this white line you guys might just be able to see it at the bottom of the camera there so we're going to start here you can still see me i'm basically just going to be for me hold the ball in my left hand so i'm leading with my right leg so if you bowl your right hand you're leading with your left so as i said two fingers either, either side of the seam uh when you when you um, step up on that right foot your right arm comes up and as we did in the frisbee video a couple weeks ago a week or so ago um, this your other hand that's not using the ball hasn't got hold of the ball that's going to be your pointer that's going to be your you know your accuracy where you want that ball to go so in terms of this i'm going to be having this the right this right hand putting right way down to the wickets and as i lift this leg up and i go to plant it my right arm comes down left arm comes over just brushing my shoulder brushing my shoulder with like you know my bicep here okay brushing my shoulder releasing the ball just after it goes past your head you know you don't want to be releasing it early up here because it's going to go you know miles in the air please make sure you're releasing the ball at the right time uh, so as you say quick little demonstration i'm going to release the ball now as well so you can watch whereabouts i release the ball so as we said fingers either side of the seam as i bring this left leg like this uh, right leg up my right arm comes up and this is our point here where, where we obviously want the ball to go so as you can see i'm starting on the little crack of the floor here i'm starting with the ball up by my chest i'm stepping as my arm comes up I bowl and it comes over, so I release just past my head. Didn't hit the stumps, unfortunately. But you know, this is the whole the whole point. So where we do these videos, it's giving you guys opportunity to watch how to do it. And obviously, if you've never played cricket before, you can spend you know hours on this in your back garden, you know, a couple of hours a day, just practicing, practicing. Obviously, when we get back into the centre, we we'll try and get some more cricket sessions on the go for you guys. So I'm gonna go get my ball. Cody's gonna have a go now. Yeah. So as Luke said before, guys, if you're left-handed, that's the technique you should be using. Okay, so for the right-handed bowlers, people with a strong right hand, I'm going to show you how I would do it, okay? So step by step again. Like Luke said, you're going to step up to the mark. You're going to hold the ball here. You're going to have your weaker hands, as Luke said, being a pointer, okay? So as we step in, the weak leg and weak hand rises. We step into it, the ball comes over, and we brush, okay? Like you said, just brushing past our ear with her shoulder and we're releasing it at, this, at the right time. So I'm going to have a go at hitting the wickets like Luke did, using the same technique, okay? Ooh, very close. And I'm going to go collect my ball. All right, me and Cody have one more go each, hopefully try and hit the stumps. But as you can see, it's exactly the same, but it's just flipped, okay? So, for example, as we said, so it's me holding the ball in my left hand, put my right leg forward for Cody. He's got the ball in his right hand and he's put his left leg forward. It's all about opposites, okay? So as you say again, Start on the mark. You can, you can start side on, but obviously in a real game when you actually are going to run up, you're going to start flat. But then as you go to bowl, that's when your body kind of twists. Okay, so as you say, step up, arm comes down, and over the head, making sure we brush our ear. If you don't brush your ear, all that's going to happen is your arm is going to be coming out to the side over here. So either you're going to be bowling it, and as you come down, it's going to go miles to the right. But if you release it too early, your arms over there, it's going to go miles to the left. So it's all about keeping that arm straight all the way around, rushing past your ear. So Tony's going to have one more go, and then we'll be moving on to some batting. Yeah, hopefully we can hit the wicket this time. Okay, there we go. So you see it bounced twice, that doesn't necessarily matter, okay? So usually you're going for one bounce, but you know, as, as we said before, this is all working about accuracy, not about power, this is not about, you know, the greatest, um, like as you say, it's not about the best power, it's all about accuracy. So if you're bowling nice and slow and has a couple of bounces but then hits the wickets, it's still going to count in a real game the person doesn't hit it. Okay? All we're going to do now is I'm going to get the bat and we're going to spin the camera around and go on to our next Okay, so for those of you that have played cricket before, you know there are a lot of different shots that you can play. Okay, so you can hit the ball as hard as you want, which you're going to, sometimes you call a slog, so you're just trying to hit it, you know, as far as you can, as high as you can. Uh, a drive, which is what we're going to take you through now, it's just a nice basic shot, but it is very effective. And also a block as well. So obviously block, 
is what it is what it you know what it says. So as soon as the ball comes in, you think it's too fast or you think it's too difficult to hit and play another shot, all you're gonna do is plant your left leg down. Obviously for me I'm right handed when it comes to the baton, but left handed when it comes to the ball a little bit weird. Okay, so as I go to block the shot, I step out my left foot and I'm gonna bring the bat down, leaning forward over the ball. Okay, all I'm doing with this foot with the bat, the reason I'm pointing it down is because as soon as the ball hits that bat, it's gonna go into the ground. Obviously, Cody said before, it's all about catching and obviously trying to catch the opposition team out. So if I hit the ball into the ground, there's going to be no chance of the, the fielders catching the ball. So that's basically our block. We're going to walk into our drive. So when it comes to holding the bat, it's similar to our golf video we did the other day, except we're just not linking our fingers. We're literally just holding the bat. Well, you guys can see there. So if I'm right-handed, I'm going to put my left hand at the top, right hand at the bottom. And if this, this here, when I'm, when I'm bouncing the bat, that's called our back lift. Okay. So I need to imagine here, obviously this ball isn't in motion. You know, if, you got, uh, if, you're, if you're in a cricket club or things, or you play cricket in school, you might have little um, like rubber tubes, which are really flexible, which the ball just sits on top and allows you to practice the shot like the drive. We've already got a cone here. We're not gonna, it's not going to damage the cone, so I'm just going to hit the ball first. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to stand left foot in line with the ball. I'm going to have my feet on shoulder width apart, both legs, both their toes, sorry, pointing forwards. As we said, this is our back lift. So we're just giving the ball there, we're getting the back nice and ready, obviously. And people tap their feet like this, okay? And the reason people tap their feet is to let the bowler know that you are ready to receive the ball. Okay, so instead of just standing there like that, people aren't gonna know. So as soon as you start tapping your leg, just indicate to them you're ready, and it shows that you're ready as well. Okay, so all we're gonna do is hold our bat, as we, as we said before, back lift. And as we said before with the block, you're just stepping into the shot. So I need to move a little bit further back, actually. So if I'm stepping like this, all I'm going to do is step and then drive the ball. I'm going to show you an example now. And as you say, in all you know, badminton, tennis, by everything, every single thing we've done when it comes to hitting, you've got to make sure you apply the follow through. So instead of just hitting the ball like this and stopping, back comes straight up and it should be it should be flat, nice and horizontal like that. Okay, so me and Cody can have one go each just to show you guys at home. So obviously, uh, Cody's right-handed as well when it comes to batting. So we haven't really got an example for left-handed, but as you said before, it's just about flipping on its side. Okay, so as you said before, feet shoulder width apart, toes pointing out, tapping our foot to let them know we're ready, and I'm just gonna drive through, okay, try and knock the ball. The whole point of a drive is, you know, we're gonna talk about it in our next activity. It's all about trying to find gaps where the fielders are and trying to hit through these gaps. So, for example, if I was to aim over here, I'd open my body out and try and hit down there. If I was aiming over there, I'd bring myself across and hit that way. Cody's gonna have a go now. And as you said, it's all about, I'll take Cody through the set as well. It's all about keeping your feet shoulder width apart, making sure you've got a nice back lift, making sure you know, you're ready to hit the shot, you're ready to receive the ball, and then stepping through, and then making sure there's that follow through with the bat as well. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have an attempt, guys. <clears throat> so as you can see, set on my feet, taking a little step back, back lift, and I'm going to go for the follow through. Okay, guys, so like Luke said, we're going to aim for the gaps where the batters are. Okay, so we're going to try and get the ball um, across the green without it being caught. That's the um, game points on the board. Okay, so we've got another activity that we're going to show you now, a little game that you can do with someone at home. So we're just going to flip the camera around for you, and we're going to explain the next activity. Right, okay, so as Cody said, we're going to take you through one more little activity, okay? This is basically about bringing everything that we've done today into a little game, a little competition you guys can have. As you can see here, we've got two nice big red cones. This is going to be our gate. This is going to be where we try and score our points. So me and Cody are going to have a little competition. We're going to have two or three goes each, or maybe just first person to get it through the gate wins. All that's going to happen is, so let's say Cody goes first, we're going to give Cody three chances. I give him two chances, actually, we've got two of these tennis balls here. So I'm going to throw the two try, I'm going to stand here on this cross. All I'm going to do is throw the two try and put the wicket, be about two yards away so he doesn't obviously hit the wicket when he swings back. I'm going to ball ball underarm, so nice and easy. We're not bringing our overarm ball that we learned before into the game. This is all about giving the batsman a chance, you know, to really start practicing that shot and really start looking at his accuracy. So as I was saying before, it's about avoiding, as Cody said, it's about avoiding the fielders. 
So we're focused on there. The, in, a, in an actual game, there'll be a fielder down here, stop the ball, come past the bowler. And there'll be a fielder roughly about here on this red line as well. Okay, so, you know, we've got to really try and aim for this gap. Point me, the reason we aim for the gap is because obviously in cricket, we've got a boundary that circles the, the whole pitch. If you knock the ball past that boundary without a bounce, it's going to be six runs. If you knock it with a bounce, so along the floor and it goes out the boundary with a little rope, you're going to get four runs. Okay, so two goes each, all about what we did before. Apart from now, obviously the ball's not uh, static, it's not just sat on top of the cone, it's actually going to be moving towards Cody. So he's obviously going to keep an eye on the ball it's nice and straight, so it's nice and easy for him to be able to make contact with the ball, but it's all about getting that accuracy and knocking it through this gate. So you guys should be able to see here whether the ball comes through the gate. That's why we've got the camera and where it is over here. Okay, so Cody's going to get two tries, and I'll get two tries, and we'll see if any of us can manage it. Okay, just put it on nice and slow. Again, it's all about making sure we step into the shot. Uh, make contact and then making sure we have our follow through as well. Okay, so a fair attempt is obviously said underground, but it's nice and easy, nice and slow. And we're going to give the best chance we can to try and get it through this gap. Okay, so a fair one. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're lucky. Okay, got up there, doesn't matter. What are things? So as you can see, that one, as I told it, it did bounce quite high. Okay, so the only thing you can do then is come back and try and go down the ball or you meet it on the bounce. So as I throw that ball to Cody, if he, if he realises it's maybe bouncing a little bit far away, all you can do then is take a couple of steps up the wicket and then drive through. So you don't always have to stay in the same spot. It's all about obviously when you're playing a drive shot and you want to keep the ball as low as possible, meet that ball by the bounce. As it, as it starts coming up, that's when you try and make contact. Really Oh, better, slightly to the left. Okay, so we're going to achieve these two balls. We're going to have our my two goes, and we'll see if we can try and knock it through the gate. So, as we said, it's, you can spend all the time you, you guys want, you know, practicing with a smooth air ball. It's nice and static, it's not moving. But as soon as you get into a game, the ball is not just going to come, you know, as nice as you want it to. It's going to maybe come a little bit wide, it might come a little bit high, but it might come really close to the ground. It's all about knowing. It's all about knowing where to position your body and you know what kind of shot to play. But every single different ball comes in and over, and you're going to be wanting to play different shots. Okay, so I have my two goes now. You know, we're still trying to get it through this game. And all I'm going to try and do is the ball's a bit short. I'll step up as I say, as it bounces up, you're going to try and make contact and make sure we have a nice follow through. If it is, if it is a little bit further back, then obviously I'll take a step back myself. Yeah, okay, so like Rick said, I'm going to have a little ball now, guys. Oh. So yeah, when you're doing this for your opponent, you're not trying to get them out. We're trying to make it a successful bat to try and help them get it in to work on their accuracy, like Luke said. So we're gonna have a go at getting a nice straight ball to Luke. Uh, just wide, but as you see, there was two bounces on that, okay? So that was slightly more difficult. Gonna give Luke his second attempt now. So we're gonna see if we can get it through the cone this time. Oh, okay, that could well have been my bad bowling skills to put look off, but as you can see, it's a really easy drill to set up. All we have is two, two cones, a, a ball and a bat. Okay, when you're doing this at home, it's brilliant if you have a cricket bat. If you don't, we can use tennis bats like you've seen us use before. Okay, they're, they're exactly the same. Um, tennis balls might be easier as well, might be less likely to hurt someone if it hits them. So you can practice with any guys. We're just showing you with the proper equipment because we have it in Firefit, obviously. Anything else to add? Uh, yeah, as you say, it's, we obviously try and make these activities and plan these little sessions we do for you guys as well. I would still hope so you guys can try it. But, you know, we, we want to still make, put as much kind of equipment in as possible to make it as enjoyable. The, more, the less equipment we seem to put in, you know, I understand it's maybe not quite as, um, as thrilling for you guys. So obviously, you know, at Cogito, we've got all this kind of equipment here, but it's just to show you guys, you know, there is, other, there is other ways to do it. There is other equipment you can use. I you know, as we said in all of our videos, we want to see you guys at home try and do some of these sessions. So if you, you know, if you have got some cricket stuff, you know, we'd love to see you actually setting this kind of thing up, you know, in a big space with brothers and sisters and things like that, mums and dads in a garden. You know, it doesn't have to be. We're not asking you to be whacking the ball all over the place. You know, it's all about working actually working on our techniques, whether it's with the ball or batting, you know, all field as well. And um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah, thanks, guys.